So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Amesy's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So, uh, it's Sunday, and I figured I'd come in today, because I haven't really taken a good look at that Saab 9.5 I picked up last week, or the week before, whenever it was. So uh, I figured I'd come in here on Sunday, and uh, we'll go do a good walk around. Uh, there's a check engine light on that we're going to have to diagnose a little. we we'll have to look into that and see what that's all about. But, uh... I've had this car on the lift multiple times before because it was one of our customers' car cars, but I never actually looked at it with the intent of owning it. I never really, I mean, I thought it was a nice looking Saab 9.5, 211,000 miles on it, which isn't really a lot for these cars. But uh, since I've owned it, I've never put it up on the lift. Uh, I've driven it a couple times on our repair dealer plate here that lets me drive it around. It. I've taken it home probably once a week I've been driving it just so the uh, the rotors don't rust up you know when you let these cars sit especially in a springtime you know when the air is moist and the temperature changes a lot it, it uh, it'll wreak havoc on a car sitting so uh, I've been driving it so I figured I'd take a moment and uh, put you guys on the head cam I got and we'll uh, we'll give this used Saab a good check and shake and bake and uh, we'll do a little check engine diagnosis and we'll also assess the feasibility of lifting this car and turning it into the the rally inspired wagon camper wagon that I was talking about in the last video of this car so uh, someone had made a comment saying that they foresee problems with lifting the rear suspension because of the multi-link system and I agree I, I definitely agree that over a certain amount of height that that the the camber and caster are going to be way out of whack in the rear uh, there's no reason that that's not an issue with the front. It's something I know is going to have to be dealt with. Um, I, I plan on using really meaty, knobby tires, and I'm going to buy you know a less expensive tire just because I'm going to take it off road. I know they're going to get beat up, so I really don't care if they wear faster. Um, I kind of going to expect everything on this car to wear faster when I turned into the the rally inspired wagon I want to do with it. So, uh, yeah, anyways, let me get you guys set up on my head so we can, uh, I can free up my hands and we can get engine light. And uh, I haven't really had a chance to check it because I haven't been driving it every day. It's, uh, it's not registered and insured yet. Um, it's got a couple issues like uh, a cracked windshield here. And you see the crack. I got to take care of that and, uh, you know, little things, little things. So, anyways, let's, uh, let's get this thing up and... Uh, Let's see what I bought. Now, uh, I don't recommend, you know, I tell you guys, always always check out a car before you buy it, but the price of this car was so right that I just kind of jumped on it without even looking at what I'm getting into. So uh, so let's see if I got a lemon or a diamond well, in the All right, bucket. guys, I got you up here on the old head cam. I got my trusty uh, filtered flashlight. So uh, why don't we start at the beginning, start at the front and work our way back. So the first thing I noticed about this car is uh, this front bumper here and this fender have like a, a faded chippy paint on it so I'm gonna say this car had some front left damage that was uh, repaired some years ago but they didn't use the correct uh, clear coat or they didn't do something right in the process kinda hard to tell now but a uh, little bit a little bit of fudgy paint here in the, in the front bumper but for what I want to do with this car, that's that's totally fine. I mean, we're going to be taking this thing off road. We're going to have some brushes scraping against it. Uh, the grill's kind of peeling. I could just get another grill, or maybe I'll peel that off and black that out. But uh, first thing we'll look at, we're going to look at the uh, power steering cooler, the intercooler, and the radiator here. Uh, I'd say this radiator was replaced not too long ago. Uh, looks like the AC condenser has a little weird bend. I don't know if that's factory or not. I would imagine not, but the AC still works fine. And then that intercooler, I don't know if you guys can see just how big these intercoolers, it might only be a single row, but these intercoolers in these Saabs are as big as the radiator, so I don't see any need to upgrade that. Looks like we got a little bit of oil leak here. I would say that's probably these lines for the power steering cooler are weeping a little bit. You know, maybe you need to have to fix that, but not right away. CV shafts look good, brakes look good, all the ball joints and tie rod ends are tight. Exhaust flex pipes nice and tight. Exhaust looks good, the cats are all in place. Looks like we got a little bit of minor 
axle seal leak here, or maybe that's just this vent tube hanging down. I see a vent tube up there. The CV shaft looks good. Struts look good. Uh, it's got this lower, the lower control arm for the McPherson strut suspension system. Uh, that should be fairly easy for me to get two inches or so out of. Uh, I just, I'll probably end up putting some spacer blocks on the uh, upper spring mounts to get this front end up where I want it. That looks pretty easy and straightforward. These CV shafts, I mean, the car will sit now where uh, the suspension's at full drop. So where the, where the wheels are now is about where I want to go. Maybe even a little hot, there's a little more clearance than I really need. So everything looks good. Nothing really looks like it's going to bind if I lift the front. So everything looks good up there. Um, looks like everything is below the subframe or above the subframe. So I should have no problem putting a, a nice bash shield over this. The exhaust looks pretty well. Looks like this flex pipe's been replaced. I got a couple of welds, but everything looks nice and solid. Everything looks nice and solid. You know, a little bit of rust here and there, but nothing, nothing serious for how bad cars get up here in New England. Probably the, the thing I like least about taking a car like this off-road, and I was kind of worried about it more than anything else, is the, is the gas tank, the plastic tank location. But uh, I should be able to put some runners, maybe some bash plates over it. I should be able to, to sufficiently protect that so I won't have a problem. Uh, I don't really want to go with a fuel cell because you have to mount those in the back of the car and that's going to take up some valuable real estate. <laughs> so I was kind of worried about this rear suspension being an issue. But uh, it looks like it's a, a double control arm. And uh, I'd say uh, this is going to, you know, doesn't really change geometry of the wheel depending on where it sits so uh, I really don't see an issue with, with raising this rear up to be where it is now and just like the front that's about the the clearance I'm looking for but I see no no multiple links no uh, diagonal links that are going to cause a caster or a camber issue that would cause a caster issue so it looks like I might just have to put a like a an adjuster maybe an adjuster sleeve we have uh I think I got just the thing for this rear suspension. I've got a uh, over on the rack over there. Maybe we should take a look and see if they're still here. There is uh, some of you guys might remember the Project Civic, uh, Project Rice Bowl, that Civic SI there that uh, we fixed up. But this is the uh, the suspension off of that car. And look, look at that nice adjusters. I believe. Yep, yeah, there it is. There's my there's my lift kit right there, boys. There it is. I'll use. I can't fall any further. I think I'll use these on the front and these on the rear. How perfect is that? Lift kit right there for it. So uh, awesome, awesome. Those parts will look like they'll uh, they'll fit right on for me. Yeah, those rear springs thing, those adjusters will go right there and lift the rear up. And well, the lift kit just got real easy, boys. The lift kit just got real easy. Brakes all look good, but I'm not real worried about those. We'll probably upgrade the pads or something. And then uh, I'm not sure about these wheels. I'm not sure if I want to run these wheels, but I was thinking something with a little more closed off so, so I don't pack the rims full of mud. But maybe I'll just black these wheels out because uh, I am going to be doing this on a budget. And Saab wheels are some of the strongest wheels out there. I'll tell you, I wish, uh, I wish these had the 4 lug, or I wish the 9000s had the 5 lug. I'd love to put my Super Aero wheels on this car. The Super Aeros would look real nice on it, but, you know, a few little, little some, some rocket panel rust, but I should be able to treat that with some phosphoric acid and some attention. You know, it looks like both sides, but I think that'll be all right for what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, everything under here is looking pretty nice. Pretty easy to get up in the air, pretty easy to lift. Uh, these sway bars are probably going to go. Uh, maybe I'll find a way to do uh, a quick disconnect in the sway bar end links because you don't really want sway bars off-road. And then the rear. Interesting. The re oh, yeah, there it is. The rear sway bar back here. Maybe some disconnects on that too. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think this thing's going to be a real, uh, a real, easy, real easy car to lift. And that, still sound, that still feels weird for me to say, lifting a car. Uh, I've never actually lifted, put a lift kit on a, on a car before, but uh, <laughs> hey, it's, it's going to be different, it's going to be cool, and uh, it's going to be off-roady. 
So uh, everything's looking good here, looking good underneath. Everything looks decent topside. Uh, we got that check engine. I gotta, I gotta check out. So uh, why don't we get that uh, check engine light scanned? We'll see what that is and if we can diagnose that issue. So it looks like I got a fuel air metering P1110. I believe that would be a lean code. I think that might be a lean code and an evap leak. Interesting. So, uh, hmm. Control. So, my guess. Now, when I drive this car, I don't hear the uh, the blow off valve, the charge air valve, go off. So, I'm going to guess this this fuel air metering code is going to be a vacuum line off to the blow off valve or the charge air release valve. PO455 might have been when I was letting it warm up. The battery was low. And I, uh, I, I actually filled some, put some gas in this car while it was running. So I think that's what that's for, pending. That's pending and that's current. So I'm going to clear these out. Hopefully. We'll clear those codes out. And we'll go take a look at the vacuum line. Something tells me there's going to be a, a split vacuum line. Back out, back out. So let's see what we can find under the hood. All right, so this would be the charge air valve or charge air bypass valve, the blow off valve right here. Uh, because these cars use a uh, mass airflow sensor, they're not speed density like the older, like the uh, Saab 9000s. These, these can't be uh, vent to atmosphere blow off valves. So uh, we're gonna have to leave that like it is, but uh, boy, this vacuum line looks awful bad. So you know, we'll just pull it. Well, there's your problem. How easy is that? This uh, this might also be part of that uh, evap too, because if it isn't seeing the vacuum where it should see the vacuum, it's going to set, you know, an evap code, a charge air bypass code, a lean code. So I believe the charge air solenoid is right here, right under. Yep, there it is. Not hooked up. Looks like it didn't actually split the line. Looks like it just got a. Uh, got blown off because this this vacuum line's pretty uh pretty ozone depleted pretty ozone deteriorated but uh for now i'm just going to hook that back up to where it goes and we'll put a zip tie on it so it stays on for now and we'll drive it and see if that check engine lights goes out hopefully that's it hopefully that's all for the check engine light so uh awesome I and mean, i like it when it's an easy fix like that you know, the basic stuff first. Uh, everything up here looks good. Yeah, everything looks good under out here. No coolant leaks, no brake fluid leaks. We got a little bit of that power steering leak, so we can make sure this is full. Yeah, it's a little low. Power steering fluid's low. That's from that, uh, that leak down that line down below. No big deal, no big deal. Well, anyways, guys, pretty cool. Fix that problem. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put a zip tie on that line. We'll get that squared away. We'll drive it a little more and see if that check engine light stays out. But, uh, yeah, project, uh, I don't know what to call this thing. I've, uh, I've decided to name the car Svenska. I think that's a good name for it. But uh, I'm not sure what to call the project of an off-road Saab 9.5 camper wagon. You guys got any suggestions of what I can call the project so I can name the videos of it? And... Uh, Looks like maybe uh, next week we'll uh, next week I should be getting this car on the road and then we'll uh, we'll see if those uh, those used suspension bits from that Honda Civic Si are going to uh, be the ticket to get this car lifted up. So uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, um, looks like it looks like I scored on this car, huh? Looks like I scored on this 9.5. So anyways, uh, leave comments. Comments are much appreciated. Thumbs up. Share. Share, much appreciated too, and uh, all right, guys. One last thing I had to do before I let you go. Gotta put the AMZ tag. All my cars, all my sobs, have the AMZ decal. <laughs> all right, guys. Until next time. Keep it out of the cabbage.